want that Deb and Terry in Indo, raise you guys' hands because they know you are. Because they are uh, the host for this Hummingbird Festival. And uh, they put a lot of work and get it all ready. And a lot of it started several years ago when they were putting out lots of sugar water for these birds to show up. He said he had 43 feeders out now. And he's the only one I know that has one feeder that's got about 20 holes on it. How many holes does that one got? 20. 20? Yeah, I'll follow around pretty soon. He'll, he'll show it to us after a while, though. As you notice, we've got quite a few hummingbirds flying around. We don't know how many we're going to catch today, but that's what we're here to do to catch. And how many kind of hummingbirds do we have in Illinois? We've got one type of hummingbird. Everything in the whole eastern half of the United States, we only have one hummingbird. The western part of the United States has quite a few more. There's 340 different kind of hummingbirds total. Most all of them are in Central and South America. The little country of uh, Ecuador has 160 of those different kind of hummingbirds. What's the name of our hummingbird? Ruby-throated. Ruby-throated hummingbird. The smallest hummingbird is called the bee hummingbird. And it occurs in a little island called Cuba. You've probably heard of that. The big one, high in the mountains of South America. And you're going to be surprised at its name. Giant. <laughs> okay. And most of these birds fly pretty fast. So you want to take a minute and show them the... Uh, the We've got the down rod here. The yellow piece here, what's called water nuts. I took around the bottom of them off. The whole PVC would have been there. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> On the subject of feeding, one thing I want to encourage all of you to never do is put any red food coloring or any food coloring in the food with it at all. If you do, your birds do not live as long as those people who do not, because they cannot digest that red food. It sticks in their kidneys and they can't excrete all of it. So they die much younger than the other birds do. And the ratio that you want to use this time of year, or most of the year, is one part sugar to four parts water. Okay? And you don't have to boil it. How many have ever uh, seen one up close before? A few of you. How many of you have actually held one? I had one on my shoulder. Yeah, you did. You got a picture of it too, huh? Uh -huh. Uh, and then put bands on their legs. Why do you think we ban these birds? See if they come back again. That's an interesting point. Of those of you who have hummingbird feeders out, how many of you have had hummingbirds come back in the spring before you put your feeders? What happened? What were they doing? Checking the area. Checking. Okay, well, what most, ha what most often happens, the bird will come back where the feeder was last year and come right up to that spot and circle around. Come out just say it was right here. It'll come right up there, and then turn its head a few times while it's still fluttering in the air, circle around, and come back again and go. I know, it's supposed to be right there. That's one of the neat things about these birds. They do come back to the same spot. And when you adopt a bird, if it comes back again, I will send you a letter saying it has been returned to the same spot or if it was ever found again. And she had it, was it your daughter? That young lady adopted one, was it a year or two ago? Last year. Last year, and it's already come back and been reported again this year. How do you keep track of them if they come to your house? Well, they have to have a band on them. How do you ascertain whether or not you put it on? Well, I know all the band numbers, though. They're assigned to me. I've got all the numbers, and I've only caught two out of 18,000 I banded uh, that were not mine. These so, Girl Scouts also would like to donate 50 pounds of sugar. Debbie and Terry, and it's back here. All so right, thank you, girls. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. A bunch of happy birds here. The birds do come back. I've already sent out almost 60 letters this year whose birds were adopted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight years ago that have come back. Last year I sent out 177 letters from people whose adopted birds have come back again. So, yes, they do come back. They're up inside. That's one thing we were able to prove with these bands. Why else do you think we ban birds? They'll find it no matter what. It could be the birds we're going to catch, say, seven, eight, nine times their weight a day. But it also depends on the heat of the day. And about 40% of their diet is insects, too, by the way. Uh, so they're not only dependent on that sugar water, they will eat a lot of insects. And the insects they eat are associated with the flowers. Oh, they will sit in the trees and go up and pick them out of the air, too. They're little tiny things, like aphids and stuff like that. Yes, sir. Is there any reason for them not coming back? Because we only got one, and we had about ten last year. That's a problem that all of us banders 
and all the bird feeders have had this year, and we don't know why yet. But the last two weeks they've been building up in numbers, and some places where I used to ban 60 to 100 in the morning, I only caught 13. In other places where I averaged, oh, I'd say 50, I caught 80. And so it's, uh, we don't know the answer to that. So as soon as I do, I'm going to make an announcement. Is there any kind of habitat that they really prefer? When there's a lot of woods around, you're going to have a lot more birds than you don't. Well, let's continue on. Why else do we ban these birds? Come back to the same spot. How long they live, how old they live to be. An average life expectancy for a hummingbird is three to five years. So those ones that I caught that were seven and eight years old were more of the exception. And I had one for 12 years. 12 years? Well, that's a record. Wow. It didn't come back this year. Okay. You were able to tell it was the same one? The same one. Had one little white speck. Why else do we ban them? Well, you see there's quite a few coming to the feeders. You might say, well, I've seen 20 at one time. If you actually see 20 birds, and the best time to get the greatest number is about dark, um, you can multiply that by three to four. So if they have 20 birds coming to their feeders now, they probably have 30 or 40 at dark, which means they probably have over 100 coming to their feeders. But we wouldn't know this if they weren't banned. Okay. Another thing is we know how much of a feeding radius there is around here. The people who live in the house over there may have a feeder out. Once they start, they got five out. <coughs> Did you ask them to take them down? Yes. Yeah. All right. I'll take it them off. <laughs> the reason I say that is, we start catching them here. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to go over there, <laughs> and then we won't catch them. So that's why we, every feeder is within a mile and a half or so it needs to be taken down um, if we're going to be really successful here in catching these birds. You have to have special permits to ban these birds. Um, it's easier to get uh, permits for normal birds. There's only three of us that have permits to do hummingbirds here in Illinois. The reason being is they issue the bird bands in cars. All the other bands are already ready for us to use, for all the other birds. Okay? There's 300 bands on this card. And little did I realize how important it was to learn how to cut in a straight line. And they are kind of small. In fact, there's 100 bands. And there's 20 of my safety. Well, you'll see that when you come up, and I don't mind if you hover over me while I'm doing the banding uh, to see what we're doing. We use pink bags to put the birds in after they're caught. We don't want to injure any of these birds, so I'm going to be monitoring everybody who actually holds one to make sure you aren't squeezing it too tight. Or holding it too. These birds, when they leave here, the males are going to be leaving in about two weeks or less, the adult males, uh, and then they're going to be heading south. It's at a leisurely rate. They'll go around the Gulf of Mexico, down into Mexico, the country of Mexico, below Mexico City, on the Pacific Ocean side. So they go over the mountains in the, in the state of Oaxaca. And then they spend the winter months in the countries of Guatemala, Nicaragua, and western Costa Rica. And then about the 1st of March, they start heading back north again. The males try to leave about two weeks ahead of the females. And they make this a quick trip because on the way back, when they get here, it's the breeding season. they got to get their territory set up and wait for those females to show up so they can start nesting. Okay. Well, when they get to the... Um, they have a different route coming back in the spring. They come up the Yucatan Peninsula. And at the north end of the peninsula, is this big body of water called the Gulf of Mexico. So, they have to put on a whole lot of fat. And then they wait for a night where there's a north wind, or a south wind from the south, and they have a good GPS system. They have to to find the same spot to come back to every year. And then they take off across the Gulf of Mexico at night. And it takes them 15 to 20 hours of non-stop flying to get across the Gulf of Mexico. Because they fly at about 25 to 30 miles an hour. And if it's been a good tailwind, a lot of times they don't have to stop right when they hit the Texas Gulf Coast. They keep flying inland for a ways. But when they do stop, they take a day or two of rest stops and have to replenish all that food that, that they used up during that flight. So then the birds spend about uh, a month coming north. And they arrive in Illinois about a day you all can easily remember, the 15th of April, tax day. That's when they usually arrive, first ones in Illinois. The majority arrive, though, about the first week of May. Any other questions before we get started? Yes, sir. Why don't we take down the rest of the feeders? But I have a lot of flowers, so I have a few. How far in a day is a What is their home area, the ones that I probably have? They know where all the flowers are.
off all your leaves, easily within a half a mile. And one of the things, how many have you ever seen a hummingbird chase other hummingbirds away? Okay, what happens is, in the hummingbird world, it's a me first deal. They find a food source and they want to keep it for themselves. The question is, why should you change the water? Well, um, if you had something that was hot for two or three days out in the sun, would you like to drink it? Probably not. The so hummingbirds are the same way. Oh, on, hot, on the hot days, you should probably change it every other day. And you never need to put more food in the feeders than they drink in a day's time. They love bees quite a bit. Well, if you want to <laughs> feed bees, you change the ratio from one to two. Why don't we start catching a few birds? Okay, here's the band we're going to stick on the bird. Right here. Right there. J27101. This is what we're going to put on the bird right there. Oh, wow, it's so tiny. Okay. Could you get back just a little bit? Right. Just like you between the toe and the ankle, right there. Uh, you got to open it up a little farther. It's just not working right. See that hole in the pliers? That means I can't squeeze it too tight. Okay. So it doesn't hurt the bird. No, it doesn't. Who wants pictures of it? I want to just stand right out there. You got to get the release the first one? Yeah. Okay, well, he, when uh, everybody else gets a picture, we'll give it to him to okay. do that. Everybody got it? And one thing about hummingbirds, they, 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 I mean, their bill is not as strong. It opens up wide. And the bird uh, drinks like a dog, laps all the juice up like with his tongue and laps it up. Okay, he's going to let this first bird go. What I'm going to do is have you have it flatten your hand, curl your hand real loose around it when I put it in there, and then just open it up slowly. It doesn't have to be tight, real loose, tight, loose, loose, loose. loose. Just relax your whole hand. There you go. And you want to go out here and just open up slow, and it may stay there for a little bit. You don't need to go too far because you don't want too close. Six of them. Females have one. And young birds. Are you ready? Yes. 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 Okay, curl your fingers over the top. Open your hand up, Al. Look, Al, how fun! Is he gonna go, Al? What do you think? What do you think about that? Are we ready to have it go? Okay, let's let it go now. We'll let it go. Is that cool? Eddie's gonna get a hold of it now, Al. Sometimes it looks blonde or green or gold. Depends on where it's angled. It probably was ruby colored. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Males are smaller than females. I think one. 38. Are you ready? Okay. Let me pull up there somewhere and let it go. Yeah. Thank you.